Well, this morning we emerged out of a huge fog bank to these extraordinary cliffs. And now we're right inside what was the ancient island. This is a caldera. It's about 200,000 years old. And the last eruption here was only in the 1970s. They call it Deception Island. It's the next fascinating stop on our incredible journey to Antarctica aboard scenic eclipse. Ice, glaciers and wildlife I was expecting, but an ancient volcano amongst this landscape is truly a sight to behold. So I imagine there is a hell of a tale to tell about this place. Yeah, there's a lot of lost history, but the history that we do know is quite extraordinary because you have multiple generations of people living here. You had the first generation of the whalers, which were probably Scandinavian. So it was known as the Hector Whaling Base. And it was one of the largest ones because it's protected in here. Now, that amount of whale rotting on the beach, this must have been disgusting living here. Yeah, it was and a hor smell. Yeah, horrible existence because you have all of this rotting flesh. Then you also have all the bird life that's living off of that rotting flesh that's on the beach. Several countries had bases here as it was one of the few places that didn't ice over in the winter months, owing to the geothermal activity. Time has just stood still here, hasn't it? Yes, when you're down here this far and it's very, very cold, the breakdown of material is very, very slow. Now, if you just dig down a bit, you actually notice that the water here is just a little bit warmer than out there. And that's because this is still an active volcano. From an ancient caldera to the cutest of chinstrap penguins, each day on board is unexpected and overwhelming in the best possible way. I've been surprised, you know, watching them walk, how kind of, um, clumsy they are, and yet so agile in the water. Well, I guess I'll answer that with a question. How would you walk if you had your knees up in your body? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, after all, they're birds. Yeah. They're seabirds, and they maybe even more so a fitting name, because they literally fly on the water. Yeah, they do. They do. Gentries might be a little bit more melodious. <laughs> really? Yeah. They've, they've got a sweeter song. I would say so. And, and these guys, it's more of a sort of a donkey squawk? It is a little bit of a squawk, yeah. Why don't you, if you do the chin strap, <laughs> I do the gen <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the guests sharing this journey with us are a lovely mix of nationalities and backgrounds, all with their own unique and wonderful reasons for joining this trip of a lifetime. So what possessed you to have your honeymoon in Antarctica? Well, I think it's always been a bit of a dream of mine in the first instance. And then um, we've always been a bit more adventurous. Out in the Serbia, you're seeing all of this, and then you come in and enjoy like a glass of champagne or something. It's kind of like, it's very <laughs> surreal. <laughs> it, is, it is. You have to pinch yourself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Pinch me moments are a daily occurrence on this trip, and none more so than what I'm about to partake in. So it seems uh, there's a bit of a little rite of passage when you go to Antarctica, and um, it involves diving into salt water that's about zero. Oh, that was fantastic. You've got to come down to Antarctica and try this once in a lifetime. 